this is a raw video which will help you with the do's and don'ts for the people for the artists who are going to try to make this woolen feather for the very first time there are three different types of techniques that you will see the first one here is i'm measuring the length of the feather that i will be doing and then accordingly i'm going to horizontally measure the width of the feather so this turned out to be a little bit small i would recommend you go in for a little bit big but you can take the same type of measurements that you see in the video so what i'm doing now here is i am cutting a uh, single strands in which i will build my feather um, in the other technique you will see a better way of cutting these strands a faster way this took quite some time for me so i recommend you keep your strand of the feather the the length of it on a wooden board and you can tape it to the wooden board so that it does not move that is one first i would say you do and not keep it on your carpet so as you see i am taking each strand and i am tying a knot in the center do not worry if it's not right in the center because at the end of each method you will obviously give shape to your feather by using a scissor cutting it so that's completely okay so i used the first strip as a guide to cut further on strips this is the amount of strips that you will have to cut based on how fluffy or how big you want your feather to look uh, so there is no set amount i think i use somewhere around 15 to 20 strips over here um, this first method that i tried honestly was quite time consuming and by the end of it uh, i was not quite happy with the feather also at least the way uh, it turned out for me maybe when you try it for the first time after watching this video it might be a little bit better for you So after I've placed the cut strips one below the other, I once again go ahead and place my previously tied knot feather so that I go ahead and repeat the same process of tying the knots to the center. As I said, do not stress if it's not in the center towards the end as I'll show you in this video. In each technique, you will have to trim to give it the desired shape of your woolen feather. So it's the same process you got to repeat it and it can be tedious as i said but at the end if you like what you see it's all worth this is a a kind of a technique for people who have more patience and who definitely enjoy art and craft because you will like at the end what you see so i see here how much is done and then i skip further and if you see i don't think this was 15 to 20 strips this is way more than that uh, it took me quite some time and again yes this is the this pro process among the other three is a little bit tedious it takes a little bit time once you're done you're satisfied with how big uh, um, your feather is you can go ahead and um, lock it in by tying a knot towards the end so that it doesn't slip out so this is one of the don'ts in the video that you need to look out for and learn from my mistake that when I tie the knot, I tie it right towards the end and I did not need any access or any extra strand. You need to do that in order to make sure that when you are done with your feather and you're giving it shape, it kind of blends in. It looks The quill of your feather looks as one of the part of it and does not stand out so it gives a better look. What you see now I'm doing is I'm try taking a comb and I'm brushing out to give it a more rustic look. But this is just an additional step in this first method. You can completely skip this step. It's absolutely not needed because some people like it just the way it is. For all those who are going to try this method of brushing out each feather to give it a rustic look, I recommend the way you see here hold on to one side while you're brushing on to the other side because there's a high chance that if you don't do that 
you will end up loosening the knots in the center and even for god forbid destroy your entire feather and then destroying your entire efforts that you've done so far so be very careful again do not do it on a carpet do it on a board so that it's uh, your comb does not get tangled between your wool and your carpet so finally this is the last stage where you will go ahead and give shape to your feather now as you see where i've tied the knot towards the end it's clearly showing a gap and it's not blending in so make sure you leave enough of strands over there towards the end so that it quickly blends in i'm cutting one side of the feather and i will use this side as in i will fold it into half now and use it as a guide to cut the other side but you, you can completely skip this whole cutting one side and using as a guide for the other side you can just use your estimation and cut both the sides by keeping the feather flat on a board and um, once you're happy with the way it is make sure you tighten it and you're good to go stepping into the second method of creating a woolen feather here is how what i'm doing is i'm creating the length of the feather i would recommend you go for a little longer at least seven to eight inches and um, you place it on your board then with the remaining for the strips you go ahead and with the help of your palm roll it around it around your palm and then you can go ahead and cut it accordingly as i mentioned before this is an easier method to do it than the one that you've seen before these strips are going to be also a little bit long because the method of creating this is simpler faster and it looks more fluffier in a short period of time so each strand you fold it into two into halves and you will place it one below the other the way you see it and you have to then adjust it and pull it towards the center making sure the quill of your feather remains intact and straight so this method is quite simple uh, first you may feel that you're getting a little bit confused what goes up and what goes down but as you see the way i'm doing it eventually it gets really simple and uh, it's quite quick than the first method so you keep doing this and you see at one time on each side you are adding two strands wherein in the first method we were adding just one strand this didn't take me much time but again the same mistake that i made here is i have kept the bottom of my feather quite less so when you measure your quill make sure you keep it long enough so that when you towards the end when you're satisfied with the width of your feather the end of the feather where you tie a knot is big enough so I'm, I'm trying here to adjust it so that i could blend it towards the end again you can tie just one knot towards the end and not two knots since it's a it's wool even one will suffice and you don't need to tie two knots so i keep adjusting my feather i keep making sure that the center is nice and tight enough the knots that i have tied and uh, once i'm happy with the way it is i place it flat on the board and this is just me adjusting it quickly so that once i am happy with the way it is i'll go ahead and start trimming it another tip here is the upper part of your feather should be broader than the lower part of your feathers this is something you will want to bear in mind especially in this step when you're giving it a shape again i've used one side of the cut feather to use it as a guide to cut the other side but again i said you can just keep it flat on your board and use your estimation to cut both the sides and it will still give you a good shape so i'm happy with the way this second method of my woolen feather turned out the only don't or the thing that you need to learn from here is the knot that i tied at the end should have been longer so that it would have easily blend in over here i'm taking i'm trying to get it right in shape by cutting even the smallest sides the smallest edges but again uh, you can completely leave that in the past i have used mod podge to make sure that what whenever i'm happy with the way my woolen feathers look I add more more podge to it with the help of a brush and leave it to dry so that whatever happens the feather of your the shape of your feather remains in that position forever and it's really really good it gives you a really good 
texture but then it makes it stiff so that's completely up to you if you want to leave it loose or you want to have it as, as a stiff feather this is the third method and the last method of this video that i've tried uh, in this method we are going to crochet the quill of your feather this method the overall leaf turned out to be quite fluffy and quite big because i had a set amount of instructions uh, while following the youtube video and i will link that youtube video down for you just in case uh, you may find my um, crochet a little bit confusing so we start off with a 16 to 18 single uh, stitch of crochet and uh, that becomes the quill of your feather um, when you're done with uh, 16 stitches you will add a little three to four more stitches and that becomes the hook of your feather so i'm counting back in order to go ahead and create the hook for the feather and i slip stitch now and what we're going to do is we're going to work our way back and make sure that we make the quill of the feather nice and thick so into each um, chain we are going to slip stitch right till the bottom and make sure you don't get confused what happened here with me is when i started slip stitching into each chain uh instead of just sticking on say to the right side i you know, accidentally started slip stitching to the left side so make sure you're very focused when you're doing this um, and this gives a really good look to your quill the center of your feather will look lovely nice and thick so that's how it looks to you will see a little bit bumps here and there because i may have slip stitch additional or maybe on the wrong side so i'm sure you know the drill by now the next step is to cut strips to create your woolen feather as usual i'll roll it around my palm and then accordingly i will cut it So this is a really good method for people who are very comfortable with crochet so you can completely go ahead with this because it's quite fluffy so now while you're doing this process make sure you stick to one side if you select the right side you continue towards the right side if you select the left side you continue in the left side okay so you go ahead and in each of your chain stitch you will go ahead and insert this strand and then to lock it in you have to do it that way it's really very simple okay so each strand you will fold it into half okay you, you with the help of your needle you pull that halfway through and then the remaining part of it so that's really simple you do it for the entire quill and it's a quick process also it gives you a really good finished fluffy look towards the end Make sure you do not leave in any gaps in between because they'll be very visible. So we're almost done with the third method also. Now if you see it's come out, it's come out really good and it's as big as my palm size, this woolen feather. And just towards the left if you look, I think I missed out on one of the chains to go ahead and add the strand so you can see the gap over there but you can obviously go back and do it because it's really simple that's the beauty of this method that if you make any errors along the way you can do rectify it even towards the end for this feather also if you want to keep your feather intact and stiff you can add glue i would recommend to use mod podge and just leave it out to dry otherwise you can just keep it the way it is just make sure you trim it well the bottom of the feather should be narrower than the upper part of the feather and that gives it a really good look and you're good to go. I hope this raw video has helped you understand the don'ts through my mistakes. So go ahead, give it a try and if you are successful in creating your very first woolen feather, do go ahead and tag its art creative.
and if you have any suggestions for similar videos please feel free to leave it down in the comment section